Hello everyone, if you're returning to my channel, welcome back. And if you're new here, hello and welcome to my stop on the Lawn Fawn Fans Winter Hop. My name is Steph and just like all the other crafters in this hop, I absolutely love crafting with products by Lawn Fawn. Just like our past hops, this one is sponsored. This time, the very generous scrapbook.com is giving away a $50 gift voucher to their online store. All you have to do to go in the draw is comment below where you're watching from. For more chances to win the draw, simply hop along to every stop and leave a comment. I'll link the next stop and all the other hoppers videos in the description of this video. This giveaway is open internationally, so everyone can join in. So what am I making for you today? Here is my very first ever slimline card, and I am so excited to share this one with you. It's clearly themed, and it is one of my favourite places on the whole planet to visit, with a bit of a Christmassy twist to it. For this card, I use my new Lawn Fawn Slimline Dyes, A Creature Was Stirring, Merry Messages Sprinkled With Joy, Coaster Critters, Bun In The Oven, Caramel Apple, Baked With a just a bunch of cute stuff. You can't go wrong with Lawn Fawn stamps. What gave me the idea for this card was actually that tiny little mouse-shaped gingerbread cookie because I have seen them in real life at certain magical places. And as soon as I saw it in this set, I thought, oh my gosh, I wonder if anyone else has thought of that yet. I just have to base a card around this. So as you can see, I'm starting to stamp out all my images. I've got two cute little mice who are going to be in the center of this card with the caramel apple. I've got some utensils and some other cute little foods that I'm going to decorate. I had to show a little bit of soft control with this card because really all the foods could have worked and I could have decorated them to fit the theme. But I had to stop somewhere and even though slimline cards give you a lot of room to work with, I still filled it all up. For the colouring of this card, I'm using some Copic markers and just some regular alcohol markers, as I don't own a lot of Copics. And to colour in, I use a really super simple technique. I just use two colours per area, the lighter one to fill in all the space, and then the darker one to do the shadowing, and then back over it with that light one to blend them out. That's about as complicated as it gets for my colouring. And I have a lot to colour here, so I will skip as much as I can, because there is a lot going on with this card, and we got to get through all of it. With the bulk of my colouring out of the way, it was time to add some really cute little details. These little rolls, I'm not sure what they are, but I feel like they look like cinnamon rolls or cinnamon buns or cinnamon scrolls, depending on where you're from. So I thought adding some white embossing powder, this one says it's high, so it's a dimensional embossing powder, would just add a really fun detail on this to make it look like it's covered in icing. As you can see, I've now started putting on my little white details on these cute little images. I'm going to skip over the bulk of this only because there is so much to do but I do promise that in the new year I'm going to be doing some tutorials on this and I'll be doing it in real time. Now to get on to building the background of this scene. I used my slimline die with a really pale grey piece of cardstock and then with some white distress ink I used my lawn fawn brick stencil. This is the first time I've done a big background like this and I noticed that I did mess it up a little bit. A lot of my bricks look joined together, but they'll mostly be hidden behind things in this scene. I wanted some windows in this wall, so I used my Lawn Fawn stitched rectangles. I wasn't after the detail, just the shape. And I used that twice to cut some big holes in this background. I know it's looking a little bit weird at the moment, but it does come together really well in a minute. I know, I've already shown a lot of colouring, but this is the point where I decided what I wanted the mice to look like. I was torn between doing them themed to look like certain characters, or do I just do them as cute little grey or brown mice? 
I decided to go with themed and this is how I transformed these cute little mice into their little characters. And there we have it. And of course, a little bow just to finish things off. So let's get back to building this little kitchen scene. I wanted my bench top to look like it had a little bit of dimension and an edge on it. So I used two different shades of brown cardstock. And I'm going to line the oven up with this to make it look a bit more real. With my slimline die, I cut another piece of cardstock, this time in white, and that's going to be my kitchen cupboards. So I trimmed it down to size and then added my little bench top over that. And here is where I kind of started playing by my own rules. <laughs> I decided not to go with the proper slimline size and I extended this scene a little bit just by dropping my bench and my cupboards down to give myself a bit more room to play with. Otherwise my windows were going to be really small and my bench was going to be really high and we wouldn't see much of those walls. This is what it looks like on the back so that you can see how much bigger it is than a traditional slimline size. I glued down my oven in the corner and trimmed off the excess. I then quickly made some drawers and cupboards with my stitched rectangle dies and trimmed off the excess. I don't know if you noticed at the beginning of this card, but there is like a scene within a scene in this one. And of course, I wanted it to be a shaker, so I cut some acetate that fit my windows. And with this piece of cardstock, I just marked out where my windows were going to be, so I knew where to stamp my images for my cute little theme park scene. I stamped these directly onto the background and coloured them in on there. I didn't want to cut them out and add any bulky pieces in my shaker window to give my shaker pieces an excuse to get stuck on anything. Here I am in blending my background. I decided to try this two ways, one going over my stamped image and on the other side I hadn't stamped my image yet. I wanted to see what it looked like if I stamped over my ink background. Just a bit of trial and error here. Both ways worked just fine. I used some deep purples and blues in hope that this kind of looked like the sun had just set. Now I know it doesn't really snow where this scene is based, but there are some pretty cool parades that go on. And I figured with this being a winter hop, we had to have some snowfall going on. I used some plain white acrylic paint for this. And then I coloured my images over my ink. I was a little bit worried about this because this ink does obviously get reanimated with moisture, but it did really well. To make things look a little bit more Christmassy, I thought some lights hanging behind the windows would look really cute. I used these little string lights from the Builder House Christmas add-on. I glued these behind the acetate facing outwards so that they were inside my shaker and looked like they were hanging outside the windows. This bit scared me a little. I have never drawn fireworks well in my life. So thanks to the brush tips of these Copics, I was able to get something that kind of looked like fireworks in the background. 
to give my card the dimension it needs for all my shaker pieces to move around, I'm using some kids craft foam which is adhesive on one side already. Once that was done, it was then time to load these windows up with my anti-static powder so that my pieces wouldn't get stuck. And while I've got my card like this, I figured I might as well put my double-sided tape on now before I put my moving pieces in so that they don't get stuck or fly out while I do this later. For my shaker pieces today, I'm using these tiny, tiny little foam balls and these itty bitty diamond shaped pieces. It was then time to remove all the adhesive backing and stick my background behind my windows. And there we have the shaker element of this card complete. I know there is a lot going on, but I feel like every step of this card just adds to the magic. And now for my favorite part of any card, putting my scene together. My magical scene was complete and all that was left to do was to adhere this card front onto my card base. For this I used some really strong double sided tape. And just as one final touch I had to have a sentiment on the inside, have a very sweet holiday. I thought this suited the theme perfectly. And with that, this card is complete. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to comment to go in the draw to win that $50 gift voucher. I really hope you'll subscribe and stick around to see what I make next. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to hop on over to the next video. I'll leave you with some pretty photos of the finished card. Bye for now.